Assalamu alaikum. I am Lamia Munira. I am currently a member of IEEE North South University Industry Application Society Student Branch Chapter. It is my pleasure to invite each and every one of you to this webinar on present and future of semiconductor industry and opportunity for engineers hosted by IEEE NSU Industry Application Society IRS Student Branch Chapter collaborating with I prefer young professional Bangladesh sector. The Industry Application Society, as a transnational organization, is interested in the advancement of the theory and practice of electric and electronic engineering in the development, design, manufacture, and application of electric systems. If your engineering interests are the need of industrial or commercial sector, the IAS will be a valuable professional connection. One of the largest special interest societies within the IFEE, the IAS focuses specifically on the unique need of industry and commerce. In the last decade, the demand of artificial intelligence-based application level 3 autonomous vehicles have not only increased the demand for semiconductor chips but have also shifted the value capture to software and solutions. So we can easily assume the semiconductor industry is one of the lead industry sectors for engineers. Keeping this in mind, we have invited our guest of the evening, Dr. Mohani Islam, who is currently working in Intel Corporation, New Mexico, USA, as a quality and regulatory engineer. He has quite mentionable experience in device performance and reliability targeting, characterization, qualification in an advanced note. Dr. Mohamed Islam completed his postdoctoral research fellow at Georgia Institution of Technology. He is Doctor of Philosophy PhD in Electrical Engineering from the University of Texas. He got his bachelor's degree in Electrical and Electronics Engineering from Bangladesh University of Engineering and Technology. Today, Dr. Dr. Mohamed Islam will discuss his experience in the semiconductor industry, its scope, and its future followed by a quiz session on this webinar and an ending speech from IEEE IAS faculty advisor, Mr. A.K.M. Bahalul Haq. Without further delay, I would like to call Dr. Mohamed Islam to take over the webinar. Okay, thanks for introducing me. Yeah, okay, let me share my screen so that. Can you see my screen now? Yes, ma'am. Yes, yes. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma okay. okay. Then let me start. And if you have any problem to see the screen or listening to me, just let me know so that I can do something like yeah, sometimes internet can drop or you can cause some problem. Anyways, <clears throat> first of all. Thank you for introducing me and giving me this opportunity to share my experience with you. So, <clears throat> my name is Mohamed Islam, and I have some experience in the semiconductor industry. I am just working for three years, much, and it's a huge industry. So, I mean, you didn't want to try to say something. Sorry. Okay. So, it's a huge industry, it's very hard to like give a complete picture of the industry like in one hour or even a day I would say it's very very difficult to say everything but I will just try to give you an overview like very like in a su superficial way what is this industry where this might go in future like in upcoming years and mostly I will try to say some, share some of my experience 
So I think that's more important like for new graduate or who are looking for a job, if they kind of get the sense like what we do in the industry, then it might help you to prepare yourself, right? Because industry is really different from a academia. So that will be my main focus. Maybe I'll spend significant amount of time on that. So <clears throat> let's start with that. Like, first of all, yeah, everyone may be interested to know about the industry, right? Like what is semiconductor industry? I hope you have some kind of background what is semiconductor, it's like silicon based chip, right? So <clears throat> then I will, here is some some information like that will help you to get an understanding like what's going on in the industry i would say if you are interested to learn more then you can go to this website www.semiconductors.org that's basically semiconductor industry organization they have different information in their website they have like newsletter they keep updating people like what's going on around the world and Every year they provide a report. Basically, all the information I I have shown here mostly from their report in 2020. So the, this, there is a PDF file. It's open for all. You can go and search for more information. So basically, what this what I'm trying to show here, like why we use where we use semiconductor industry, right? First of all, like. The whole semiconductor user and you can see like here is what is the worth of each segment right so mostly the communication and computer is the major major segment and like most of the revenue is coming from these two segments but it has some other application like automotive and then some uh using the government sector so automotive is also growing right we know like we all are trying to get like self-driving car etc which will be like which will require like advanced uh electronic chip and etc so wherever we use electronic chip then semiconductor will come into play in that sector right and in the bottom graph we can see like this industry is steadily growing for over last 20 years like from 1999 it was like around 150 billion dollar industry but now it's growing almost to 500 now we can see a bump in the industry in 2019 it's maybe mostly with the covid but hopefully it will keep growing because we know right we are every day we use a lot of devices nowadays like mobile phone laptop and smart pad and like smart watches etc so everything Every device we use, even television or etc. Every device we use, we need some kind of semiconductor chip, right? So, from our basic understanding, I think we can see that we need more and more chips every day. So, definitely, I expect that semiconductor industry will keep growing. So, there is almost no doubt about it. And if you see, like, that's why USA is spending more and more money in the R&D because we know, like, if we want to move forward, we need to invest in the R&D more because definitely we need more advanced chips so that it can work more efficiently and faster, right? And in this graph, you can see the global market share for different country in the semiconductor industry. So US has still the major market share almost 47%, then Korea has 19%. So you can see other than US, most of the thing they have highlighted, they are like Asian countries, right? Like Korea, Japan, Taiwan, and China. And I'm, I'm pretty sure like Taiwan and China may get more market share in near future so that's something interesting like still we can see like us is dominating like very clearly but over the next few years or maybe in the next 10 12 years that might change dramatically that something we are expecting like maybe some other country will start to dominate in, uh, beside usa and you can see like in USA, there are plenty of jobs, like direct jobs in the semiconductor industry. So yes, 
uh, as a profession, it's not a bad choice to come into the semiconductor industry, especially if you're electrical engineer, then I would say it's an interesting place to work. And here is some of the industry, like leading company who are working in this industry, like we know about Intel, Samsung, maybe you have heard about Toshiba, Qualcomm, Micron. Now here is a one company, TSMC, it's Taiwan based. They are growing so fast, almost all the advanced technology like it's coming from TSMC or Samsung. So yeah, to, and there are some other companies like Nvidia, they're doing really good. TI has lead the company at some point, like they were like, really good. But these are some company, if you are interested, you can go to their website, you can check like what things that they are doing and what's their plan in the future. So that might give you some more, more information about the industry. So next, I'd like to go to how it works, right? Or just an overview, I'm not sure, like, maybe people will try to segment it in different ways. I mean, it, it's hard to hard to say everything in a short, short <clears throat> talk, but what I can say, like when we work in the semiconductor industry, there's some flow, like you will see, like maybe if you're aware of like semiconductor industry, you, I hope you have heard about like all the things we are, I don't hear anything so but i hope my connection is fine right okay so <clears throat> you'll heard like we are moving from 40 nanometer to 10 nanometer then 5 nanometer like planar fed then thin fed gallium arsen sorry gate all around fed etc so what happened like we are moving forward we are trying to make try to make our transistor smaller and more efficient so that we can have more option in a small smartphone or in a tab or everywhere right so how does it work first we we have our and in this section they do a lot of research to figure it out how can we move forward right how can we make our chip more efficient and faster and etc right then we have a pathfinding team it's kind of like research and pathfinding is like work together like when we make some breakthrough or when we realize okay we can do something to uh to introduce a new technology node then they hand the research to the pathfinding team and then they do some work they try to to implement that idea in a real transistor and a real chip and then they transfer it to the development team they work to improve the yield mostly and to optimize the flow to reduce the cost etc and then they transfer it to the manufacturing team like full manufacturing team and yeah they basically make the chips and then in the fab like i work for fab and in the fab we make all the chips in a wafer level but then there are many stages after we are done with the wafer level fabrication of the chip because it goes to some other part of our industry and they do the packaging and assembly and then the final product is uh created and then sent to the end customer so there are a lot of work going on like we just use a cell phone Maybe we don't know from where the chips are coming and how much effort people have put like how many engineers have worked to just make it work right and there is a design verification part that is like a little bit different from the fab i don't have much exposure to that part because i work for the fab we are focusing on the fabrication part like how can we make the chips in the way for right but design and verification team they design their chip based on uh, different technology right how can they like it's kind of like chip design part so that i don't have much exposure so i will mostly talk about the manufacturing like how the fab works basically so that's kind of same for pathfinding development or full manufacturing side it's kind of same flow the way we fabricate the chip in the way for and how we characterize that so i will mostly focus on that part so here is kind of an overview like how does it work first thing we do is fabrication right we have to make the chips in silicon wafer and for fabrication we have some standard silicon fabrication processes like 
when we get a wafer, we have first clean it, then we do lithography to transfer the pattern from a mask to a wafer. Then there's H, H means like if we want to take out some materials from a wafer that's called H, then we do different deposition like thin film deposition, metal deposition, right, to create the chip. And then implantation is required because we know like silicon is semiconductor, right? That's the base for everything. But Silicon is not like conducting right material, it's semiconductor. So to make it more conductive, we need some kind of doping implantation in the, in the wafer, right? So these are basic fabrication technique. I would love to go through this process like a little bit more in deeper, but I think it will take forever because like even just to give an idea how lithography works, it, it, take, it takes time, right? But I hope if your major is electrical engineering and if you are almost graduating or if you're in your senior year maybe you have got some idea to the fabrication because when i was in undergrad we had a course, course that, that, that was possible in the fabrication so if you have taken some courses, courses like that, that then you should, should i think i, think, I hope I you will you know, know like all these processes like 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 I mean, the I mean, ideas, ideas are not very complicated, but to when we try to implement it goes in the real world, 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 then it gets like slightly complicated. complicated. So, so in addition to fabrication, when we make that shape, right, there are like hundreds, hundreds, of, hundreds of steps we have to go through in the fabrication process. Maybe for one with a VH, like multiple times, right, in the little bit of a but when, when we keep, when the wafer, the wafer keep moving, moving, we need to ensure like, like okay, the wafer, wafer is working right and we are getting everything as we expect. That's why That's we why have we many have line microbiologists to, to take images to, take images to, to measure, measure different, different things in the wafer. We also we see like, like there is an effect in the wafer or not. Like if you have some idea, like when we do the fabrication in the fab, these are like, we have to maintain a very strict condition in the fab because these are like this nano scale devices, right? So some particles, some minor defect can like damage your wafer or damage your chip. That's why you have to always scan the wafer to see if there's any significant amount of defect or not. So in addition to fabrication, we have to always keep monitoring the wafer. I can say easily, we have to monitor like different parameters. In addition to that, when the wafer is done, uh, almost done, uh, then we have to do electrical testing for performance, functionality, reliability, etc. So what is performance? Performance, I, I will talk more about that in the upcoming slide. So that will give you some idea as to what is the fabrication, what is the testing, etc. And when all the testing are done, then we have our device team, new team, reliability team, we check the data, right? We have to do like plenty of data analysis. We have some other method system to monitor, to monitor the data, data in addition we manually check a lot of data, data to ensure like okay, okay what wafer we have, we have made, made it's it's good right, right. we can send it to the customer and, and then we have all the installation and failure analysis if, if i if i find them for for installation and failure analysis that's very important like when we try to find like say for example we know like one of the chip is not working or more with is not working then we want to understand like what's going on right maybe our in all the lines are not showing this maybe we have some idea like okay we have seen some abnormality in the data but what, why it's happening right we maybe sometimes we need to understand more detail i, I will give you some idea like when we need like if they are advanced advanced control then we do a five if that's also very important a lot of lot of people work in the in this team and it's i don't know like some people might argue some people might agree like Part of part FA, of we do like, like pinch testing, CMT, CMT MA, FA, MI, like some, some advanced imaging technique or characterization technique. Some, some people will say maybe this is part of FA, they are separate team. But anyways, we, we do it. When, when we want, want to find the failure and we want to understand, we have to do a lot of characterization using very advanced microscopic technology. Again, I'm not sure like in in Bangladesh most probably it's hard to use a CMTM, this kind of thing. I'm not sure if there is any way to use those, but 
maybe if you, if you have taken any courses like semiconductor chemistry, characterization, etc., then you might have some idea. If I'm not wrong, I learned about these things a little bit in the undergrad. But when I was in the grad class, I came to know more about these things. And then these are like basic, like very integrated to semiconductor chemistry process, right? But you understand or make I don't know. Like when I Go go my job first, first time, time and, and I went into a fab, so I don't work in a fab, but I just, I just went for a PC. It's so like, like, it's kind of like, like, like a sci-fi movie, movie. Because, because everything, everything is, automated. is automated, people are not people touching, are not touching, touching the, the wafer at all, all. everything, everything is, happening is happening using some automatic robot or something, and it's going to different tools for each process, and everything is automated, so it's very amazing, there are like plenty of like, Videos, videos you can, you can see, see like, like from Intel or Google or Samsung, Samsung how, how they do the, the fabrication process right they will right? give you some of if you see one, see one of the videos you will see like it's, it's very amazing, amazing. And so, so that because a lot of automation, like many people are working just to automate the process, they are always monitoring like all the tools are working and everything is working fine, just think about it like 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 Thousands, thousands of wafers are fabricating, fabricating at the same, at the same time, time in a fab. If you have a power pump, pump if you lost the power, power for a couple, couple of seconds, seconds, it will be a complete mess for a fab. Right? They, they might lose like millions, millions of dollars, dollars like, like thousands, thousands of wafers. It's, it's, it's very complicated. complicated. We have to ensure like everything is moving accordingly, right? right? And all the fabs, I think all the fabs are 24 7 and 365 days in a year. There is no point where have just, just sits see it and, and wait, wait for something, for something right? right? So it's, it's always, always running. running. So it, it, it's, it's very really complicated. complicated. Like, like, when I, when I, I mean, my PhD, I have worked, have worked in clean room, room for my, my main space PhD, PhD research. But, research. but when, when I saw the first industry fab, it's just, I was like awed by that, like how amazing. Lead lead works. Works. Anyway, anyway, so there's a lot, lot of work, work in the automation. In the automation. So, so you understand, understand if you're exploring software, software, if you're a computer, computer engineer, engineer, you can, you can work, work in the industry. industry. So, so from, from there, I'd like, like to also mention like in the fabrication, right? In the lithography age deposition, we use a lot of chemicals, like abundant amount of chemicals are used. That's why I've seen like many chemical engineers. People from chemistry and from people from mechanical engineering work here. So it's highly interdisciplinary field. It's not like only electrical engineers are working here, right? So that's another amazing thing about some industry. Anyone can contribute to the industry if you go to the any site and see the career website. You see like plenty of jobs up there. So these are maybe directly connected to the with our manufacturing in addition to that, like as I mentioned, we use a lot of chemicals, right? So there is a safety issue, and especially in USA, safety and environment is very crucial. We have to ensure like safety first, like for Intel, I know, like they always say, like whenever their CEO or anyone talk about the industry, what is their revenue, etc. First, they talk about the safety because they think it's first because a minor accident can cause severe damage, damage to the people, people right? Because, because say for example, the we are using plenty of sulfuric acid. acid. If something goes wrong and people exposed to sulfuric acid, it might be like severe injury. So the so environment is very important. The facilities, how can we place the equipment in the in the fab? How can we optimize the process flow? How can we optimize the tool setting, etc. So a lot of people People work on those things also. So then supply chain, right? We have to buy a lot of chemicals, we have to buy silicon wafer. Basically, like most of the silicon industry, they don't even make the silicon wafer itself. We buy the silicon wafer mostly and then we fabricate it, right? So we have to buy the silicon wafer from some vendor. So we have to buy chemicals, silicon wafers. Then when we make the wafers, then we have to sell it to the customer, right? So how much wafer we will buy, how much wafer we will make, and how much wafer we will ship to the customer. That's also critical. So supply chain management is critical. Planning team works pretty closely with us to tell us if we need this amount of wafer. So from this slide, instead of technical, 
going into much technical, I wanted to highlight like there are plenty of opportunity for all types of engineers and people from different fields to work in semiconductor industry. It's not only for electrical engineers, I think it's open for all. I mean, like maybe most of the engineers are electrical engineers, but people from different fields are working in this field. Okay. Then let me share some of my life experience. Like to give like what we do in our day to day work, work and, and we try to explain some, some slides quickly. So, first, first of all, this slide is showing like three fed, right? It's planar fed, then it's a thin fed, and it's gate all around. I'm not sure if you have heard, but this is very latest technology. I tend to learn about this recently. So, this is from a Mag Mag news magazine, magazine, and I think it's about the like Samsung. Maybe they published this because they came about, about the, they introduced it all around the fed. So, so now, now why we are moving from planar to 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 what are these basically, right? So, so when we when move we from planar to fin fin to KLM, gate all around, we are we doing these things, things just, just to improve the, the performance, performance and reduce the size of the fed, right? So that's basically the motivation. And even within fin fed, like 14, 10, 7, these are all fin fed technology. You know? but, even with fin, within FinFET, we are trying to reduce the minimum feature size, maybe the gate length, fin size, etc. That's why we are moving forward in the exam. Even with Fortin, we have derivative technology. So they, they are minimum features, they are very similar to Fortin, but even within Fortin, we have done some optimization to improve the device performance. So that's all about it. So that's interesting. I have worked on like FinFET and planar fit to some extent not in GA yet. Also, but these are basically when we talk about semiconductor, we always think about fit, right? But it's interesting that semiconductor also in semiconductor we do some other work and that is interesting. One of the things that I currently work on is like Silicon photonics. That's very interesting. Intel works on silicon photonics. I did not even know that before one year I tried in Intel. But they are working, I think, for a long time because I have seen some videos from them, the YouTube, which is open for public, like what is silicon photonics and why we do that. So silicon photonics is basically we try to like communicate using light, right? That's efficient because in the in the logic we have to create an interconnect, wire, etc. But silicon photonics, we don't need that. So it has modulator, demodulator, photodetector, laser, all these things to make the transmitter and receiver chip and convert the electrical signal to optical, then optical to ele uh, electrical. And, and laser, laser is really important. important. So, so I have I to have spend most of my time currently to work on laser. So, so if, if, if you want to do your PhD or master's, you can on, on, if you know what's, what's going, going on here, here in the industry, industry then, then you can decide, you can decide like, like if you're interested in the industry, 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 you can work in all these things, things that you can get an opportunity to work in the semiconductor industry. industry. I am silicon for the so we, we are not very familiar with that. So I would like to show sure. video just, just given like, like, like why why, why we see 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 right mostly it's used in data, data center so, so let me share tell me if you if, if you can can you see the screen can someone come or can you yes yes is okay an ever increasing number of types and sources in fact 90 percent of the world's data was created in the last two years alone this explosive data point is placing extraordinary demands on networks with times more traffic within the data center compared to total internet traffic, requiring large-scale data center operators to deploy higher speed connectivity over greater distances, which could be longer than several football faults. To meet these demands, a massive number of high-speed optical transceivers are deployed to connect switches, converting electrical data to optical signals that are transmitted on fiber optic cables over distances from hundreds of meters to several kilometers. However, 
These plant series are often expensive. Traditional ops manufacturers have struggled to keep up with the unprecedented deployment size of hyperscale data centers. But Intel Silicon Photonics has changed the game by integrating optical data transmission with Intel's world-class silicon manufacturing, enabled by the world's only hybrid silicon laser. This breakthrough technology converts silicon-based electrical signals into light, enabling data to be transmitted over great distances at ultra-high bandwidth in today's hyperscale data centers. And with multiple 100 gigabit products shipping at high volume, Intel Silicon Photonics delivers a cost-effective solution for faster connectivity over long distances to maximize hyperscale compute utilization. Intel Silicon Photonics is also expanding beyond the data center with products for 5G wireless connectivity for communication service providers. And in the future, Intel Silicon Photonics products will drive a significant integration band and will provide even greater levels of integration with silicon, dramatically increasing system performance, higher density, lower latency, and lower power. Intel Silicon Photonics, breakthrough network technology for demands of hyperscale data centers today with compelling invention for the future. To learn more, visit us here. Okay. okay, so that's so pretty that's much it. Let me share my screen again. Okay. 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 So then okay. let me okay. talk okay. about okay. some work that, that I do, like, like my day to day work. work. Like, like when, when I was, I was, was, it, was it, currently I'm working as a quality and reliability engineer. Uh -huh, but uh -huh, before that, I work as a device engineer. engineer. So, so what device engineer, engineer does, does, let me try to give you some essence of that. So, so <coughs> when you when see, uh, see a simple fit, right, 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 it can be transistor, it can be, it can be planar, it can be thin fit, right? right? It has basically junction, junction means source and drain. It has, if it's thin fit, it has thin, then it has K, and then contact, and then we always have millions of transistors in a chip, right? So we need interconnect to connect all the chips together. So as a device engineer, our main goal is to ensure like all the transistors are working the performance, the performance is working, working. performance is as, as we are expecting, right? So basically we have to ensure that the best performance, performance is fine, right? right? How we do that? So, so there are many things, things it can be can complicated, be but in a simple word, what is performance? Basically how I see that performance can be defined as at a given leakage current, how much drive current you are getting, right? We all know maybe the transistor equation, right? So from that, we know how to calculate leakage and drive current. If you have taken some semiconductor course, maybe you are familiar with that. So at a given leakage, if you get the desired drive current, then we will say our performance is okay. Okay, right. Yeah, right. If you can you somehow, can somehow get, get more drive current, then I will say your performance is improved. improved. If you are getting, getting less drive current at a given leakage, then you will say like, like my, my uh, uh, performance, performance is degraded, right? right. So, so, so that's, that's kind of like a major like goal of a device engineer, just to ensure the device performance and centering and getting desired leakage, desired drive current, and the performance is okay, right? And in order to do that, we have to understand all these things, like how junction work, in work, etc. Like we have to understand the process flow, if something goes wrong, we have to understand why went wrong, right? So. It, it requires, requires like, like our understanding, understanding of the device, of device physics, physics in addition, in addition to the in addition to that, we have to understand the process flow because, because we have to understand from where it's coming from. from. Like, like the process flow, as I mentioned, like, like, it's very, very complicated, complicated like, like there are plenty of steps, steps to make up the effort, right? right? So, so here's kind of a, just a simple cartoon that is trying to show like you take a simple wafer, then you do some lithography to pattern, then you do edge, like you edge all the silicones, right? You can see from here, then you deposit some material, then you grow your junction, which is clean, and then you put some metal gate, etc. So the process is really long and really complicated, and as a device engineer, you have to under understand kind of the whole process, process flow so, so that you can, can tell if your performance, if your performance is not up to the mark, mark what went wrong the flow and how it's connected, right? right. And, and here is one 
picture of a film fair, right? right? If you go to the, the film fair, like, like one of the one key problems we have is parasitic capacitance, right? The capacitance we don't want, want but, but, but they are always in the, in the transistor. And even the capacitor can be divided in sub like just think about it, this is a transistor, so these are all like in nanometer scale, like seven nanometer, 10 nanometer, Type thing. And, and within, within these, these between uh, contact, contact junction and thin, there can be many capacitance, capacitance like capacitance, 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 capacitance source and thin, thin top, top and bottom, and then contact and uh, uh, gate. So, so we have, we to, have understand to understand and that, that later, later like if we see a problem, we have to understand whether it's coming from this capacitor, this capacitor, this capacitor. But the same way we can divide all the parasitic resistance, then we have to understand that. So we have to understand like it is correlation, like like correlation, like many things. And in order to do those, we have to create some structure. We have to find a condition like this testing. Like what is meant by equity correlation between line? This is very important as a device engineer to run, to run fab. Fab. Some, some people have to work on these all the time. All the time. So, so here is here some example, example, right? For example, if, if my capacitance, capacitance change, how my drive current, current will change, or how my leakage current will change, that, that we have to understand. If my implantation goes wrong, if I change the doping, like if the doping is changed from my desired target and what, what will happen, happen to all this parameter, right? right? Then, then from, from the, the inline, so for example, my thin, I'm trying to make a thin with seven nanometer width, right? If it goes to 10 nanometer or five nanometer, what will go different in the drive current on it that we have to understand. Also, there is a inline line correlation. So for example, as I mentioned, there is a thin that is a junction, right? They depend on each other. If my thin goes, Different than, than my junction and boost So, so we, have we have to understand all, all this correlation and all the time we have to monitor many data from different wafers, right? And each wafer has, has plenty of ties. So, so we need very really extensive data, data analysis. analysis. So, so that's one part, part like, like maybe it's hard to get that kind of skill from the academia, but the bit of you understand the data analysis or whether you can do the data analysis using anything like Maybe it's, maybe it's Excel, Excel maybe, maybe it's some icon, some, some script, script, or maybe, or maybe something else. It's good, like, like it's good to, to have experience on big data analysis, analysis right? that, that really helps. helps. Then, then how, how we have to design the structure, structure because, because as I have shown, shown like, like there are many, many capacitors, right? right? How can we create structure to decouple which capacitance change, whether it's thin junction to thin or it's line? Uh, contact, contact to field, field right? right? So, so in, a contact to date. So in, in, in order to decouple all, all these things, things, we have to create different, different types of structure, and that, that's, that's really critical. critical. You, you have you to understand, understand the physics very well to, to create, create the structure. structure. In addition to that, we use different kind of software. Maybe cadence is very common, right? If you have taken the analog of course, or the other course, maybe you are familiar with the cadence, right? We can do layout. We can create schematic and, and then we can compare our, our schematic and layout, layout right? right so these so are the few things we do like drc is design rule check first of all we, we, we have some design right? if we want to make a fintech with two nanometer gate length we cannot do that right because there is a limitation in the process that's why we have some design rules that we cannot violate like length has to be a minimum size and everything right so design so rule design is important. important. First, First, we have to understand the design, design rule. rule. And when and we create, create the structure, we have to ensure that we are not violating any rule. Then, then we have to do the layout process, schematic check. Then, then we have to define, like, say, for example, we have created a layout to measure the drive current, right? Then we have to design how much voltage I will apply in the train. The key from, from where, where I will measure what, what will happen in my body, body whether it will be grounded or it will be floating, or it will, will I will I apply some bias. So, so that's, that's another another, another side of device engineers usually they do this, or sometimes we have layout team tapes to do that. So, if you are familiar with the cadence or any layout structure software, and if you are familiar with layout schematic. 
that, 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 that's, that's really, really good for the semiconductor industry that may be view opportunity to work in the semiconductor industry. So it's the best physics, it's fabrication, it's layout, etc. And then, and then one, one thing we do, we, do, we, we have always, we have an yield team, they always try to improve that yield, that's kind of their job, but as a device engineer, we have to support them, right? Now, what is yield, basically? Just to Just give you an idea, like, if you have, have a, a wafer, right? right, then, then if, if I, I think, think about, about, like, we have chips, chips right? we make chips in the whole wafer, wafer. But, but all the chip does not work in, in a same way, way right? Like some, some chips performance better than others, others right? right? So, so what happened, like, like, if, if you give, if you segment the whole wafer in Four or five zone, like maybe center, then outer ring, outer ring, outer ring. You will see, like, maybe like performance will vary. Zone one will show some kind of performance, zone two will show different type of performance, etc. Right? Or maybe you can see, like, the first coordinate is working better than third coordinate. It can happen. Like, so, in paper, we will see some variability, like, not all the dice are working the same. So, within Wafer, there will be variability. Then, when we do the batch process, we don't just make one wafer at a time, right? Maybe we, 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 like, make a batch of 20 wafers, 10 or 25 wafers. So, then within a batch, there will be with two wafer variation. Then, there will be definitely batch to batch variation, right? So, how can we do, we reduce all this variation and improve the consistency that's basically the key right for example if you have two parameters x and y you know your performance is good when your x is higher y is higher like in the green zone but if you are in the red zone that means okay these chips are not working as expected so your your job like as a team the yield team and device team work together kind of to ensure that most of the chips will remain in the green zones, right? So that's kind of the yield improvement idea. So device and yield, so hopefully you get the idea, right? What we need to understand as a device engineer or yield engineer, right? Now, as a lab engineer, what is the goal? The lab is basically, we have to ensure that it's, it's a simple question that we always try to answer. Are good dice good, right? And if yes, for how long they are good, right? Say, for example, one transistor is giving you exactly the performance you are expecting. But will it, how long it will survive, right? That's basically we all know about the water, water right? We don't want our mobile to stop working after six months or nine months, right? So, so, in order to ensure that your mobile will keep working for two years, three years, 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 we have to ensure each transistor will work for three years. Right? Right? Even if one transistor breaks, your mobile may break. Right? Right? So, that's, so that's why reliability is important. important. We have to ensure like our end customer will get the performance for a specific amount of time. Since so I'm a reliable engineer, 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 we have to calculate the TPTM, which is like, is like how, how many guys will survive in a long run. run. Kind, kind of, of like time dependent failure rate, failure we have to know. Like, like it's, it's, it's very, very basic graph for reliable engineer. It's called path of curve. Like, we have to quantify like if I make one million transistors, how many will fail at early time. Then, then over a period, period of time, time there will be some random thing. Right? Right? Some transistor will fail, no matter how much effort we put. And, and when we when will start paging, we will see more fallout. So, we'll have to engineer, try to ensure, like, okay, okay. Some, some, like, we will be able to meet the requirement for the reliability. And in order to do that, how can we do that, right? That's the question. So we always try to apply some stress. You will know, like, if you are interested, you can read about this HCI, HDB, HHP. These are common type of reliability tests we do on our transistor, we do on our devices. And the idea is very simple. We apply elevated voltage current, temperature, humidity, or something else for a certain period of time. And based, and based on, on that, that we tell like, like okay, okay we start like for three years. years. We don't we like put like voltage, voltage and we keep using the transistor for three years. years. Right? It's, it's not an efficient factor. factor. So, so we use some, some accelerating, accelerating factor, factor and, and we see how long, long 
uh, how the device is performing, and based on that, we can predict like it would work for three years, three years, years, years. So, so that's important. important. And, and one, one thing, thing is important, important as a reliability, engineer reliability statistics is a little bit different than performance statistics. We use kind of different statistical model, two of the very common are one one and one more. So again, if you're interested, interested to be a reliable engineer, maybe you can read about this. You can even get some information in the video. And then, in, in, I would like to like talk a little bit about the laser. So, what is laser? Laser is basically nothing but a step of semiconductor right? We have, you'll see plenty of research that are about that laser and the plugs that work on that. So, it's, it's a good field even for your research. You're not in this work to work with semiconductor, but you want to do your PhD on your research, you can work on laser. So, reliability is a concern for laser and for laser assets, like graph or Fit, right, right, like right kind of leakage. For, 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 for laser, laser the similar kind of some kind, kind of graph can be current versus optical, optical power. power. For laser, we buy some, some current and get the optical power, power. And, and we usually, we usually get, get this green line. line. If something, something like clean, like then we'll, we'll say the laser, laser, laser is good. If we say something like this, we'll say the, the laser is bad. If, if, and that this dotted line, line, I would say this laser is completely like, like, not working, right? Like, like, so, <clears> and for silicon photonics, laser, laser is the critical is thing for reliability. So, so we have to ensure like our laser is good from the reliability perspective. And one of the major issues we see, like there are different mechanisms for failure for laser, but one of the major is hot catastrophic optical damage. If you want to know more about this, Feel free to study a lot of channels, even Wikipedia has very decent information to start with. So, again, for laser, we do the same to ensure that reliability we apply to our research. And here are some advanced images, maybe TM, IBM images. Like you can see, this is a good laser, right? But if you see a spot, then you can see that the And you can see, like, there's some. This laser is bad because we see all these things, right? All the, all the unwanted lines here. And you can see this laser is good when it's continuous, but here you can see the advancing thing they have seen, like something is wrong, right? You see some wire, etc. So these are all I have taken from open source, nothing is secret to you. Google, Google, go to Google, Google Scholar, Scholar and you will get a place before the part of that. So, so interesting. interesting. That's, that's where I find a thing to like. When we when say we laser say is clean, it's, it's, it's not, not passing. Do we have a specific team? Can you, can you check something, something to understand what's going on? Right, right. In the lot of work, right? So, that's pretty much it for me. Type of skills that I'm trying to find. It's a vacuum thing on the computer. There's the type of skill you are looking for to understand the device physics. So we take some kind of physics course, right? Now you understand that's better. And then it's more polymeric. You can keep digging and keep playing it. Then you can learn some software like Kerens and Emission and KLL. This and other stuff just to see the layout. So, so if these are helpful, then you have to understand the testing part. How can we apply voltage on it and how can we measure it? Then the application process, if you understand, that's really helpful. Then the analysis is a really important part. We use Jump, Excel, Python, etc. Different types of software. If you have a program that will help you on the analysis part. For Jump, I'm not sure maybe it's. it's, it's you have to buy the, the license, it's expensive, but if you're getting student or sure now, if you just want, want to see some people in, in, the, in the YouTube, that, that will give you some idea. At least you can tell, hey, I know how that works. That will help. And this is statistical process control. This is really important. I mean, the statistics is really important because everything is statistics, right? Nothing will be on target. Like there are millions of times we have to know our control limit, this polymer, and we have to say how we are doing statistically. Right? If your one wafer is out of the 
distribution limit in your understand like okay what's what's then you will go and check what's going on the steps to understand the steps this is really for that and not in good background understand this case but i am learning today it is it's very very important to understand the statistics and then yes you have to make decision every day do problem solving and do communication it's highly diverse Field, 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 so one thing I would like to mention, like model based problem solving, scientific research, not not know much about that, but it's very important. Maybe like some people know that if you have taken some courses from other methods, but it's very important to understand model based problem solving. That that's really important. You can put in your skills. I guess not like some things, but it's good to know the basics. And, and yeah, yeah that's, that's pretty much, much all, all from, from me. me. Then, then you like, like to say, say like, like what motivates me, right? right? So far, I think I talked about, about that, but, but I have done my done PhD, PhD in main space biosciences so or to detect cancer, cancer and I did like my postdoc in the in same the field. Then I started then I working, working for FinFET, right? Ordinary meter FinFET. And now I'm working on silicon coating. So, then, then within, within a short, a short period of time, time, I have been exposed to different things. I think it was pretty challenging for me to keep pace with everything. With everything. Right. It's not that like, like I wanted, I wanted to, do, to do, but this is what it is. So, so I always try to enjoy my work. work. I don't, I don't think about, about the output, right? right? Even if you do your PhD, your master's, especially for PhD, you get very frustrated. Hey, nothing is going wrong. Nothing is working. So. But, but the thing, thing is, is, even, even if, if you do the job, the job you'll sometimes, sometimes you'll struggle, you'll struggle a, lot. a lot. So, so all, the all the time, it's, it's better, better if you can enjoy your work, work that makes you easier, easier instead, instead of getting stressed out. out. So, so that's, that's one point I really, really think, like, 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 I try to focus on my work. I don't do it. Basically, I don't like the work. I don't know. Like, why talk about that? I don't know what does it mean. So I just try to enjoy my work. That's it. And one thing I'd like to mention, like, yes, in future, if you want to do some economic or now, the industry is going, it's fine. And maybe the majority of the share might be from USA to some other part of the world. Or it or may, not. may not, but the but main the thing, thing now, what is, what is I am personally experiencing, like, things are moving so, so fast, fast. Maybe, maybe from earlier times, right? right? This technology is advancing, so now, now it's, it's very, very competitive, right? right? Things are changing, changing every day. Every Machine day. learning, AI is there, people are losing their job, many things are not automated. So it's better to have some kind of mental leader mindset if you want to work in the street to be flexible to learn things like really helps. Like one thing I really like that Harari told in an interview, like, our, our our earlier days, we, the, the purpose, purpose of education, education was, was to learn how to make a stone house and stay there, there or live there, there forever. forever. Now, now, things have things changed. changed. Now, now, we would we like, like to learn how to, how to make, make a tent, tent live there for a while, and, and whenever, whenever it's needed, needed I will fold my tent, tent, move to somewhere else, else make another tent and live there. So now, so now it's very important, important to be flexible, to learn different, different things, things, not only, I mean, you are here in engineering, you just, just focus on, on device basis, it may not work. work. So it's, so it's really important, important for us, us to expand our skill, right, right, to learn good analysis, learn programming, learn, learn even within some conductor, we want to learn that that's technology, right? We want to learn that we want to learn that we want to learn that we want to know what's even for me. And in and future, maybe we will see a search of, of bio. Right? So we, it might help to learn something about bio. bio. So, so whatever, whatever learning opportunity I get, I try to learn that and try to enjoy that. So kind of small motivation that I have when I work. Because working in the silicon industry is really hectic. It's a 24 7 as I mentioned, I'm 365 days, so sometimes work can be very hectic. And I know some people break, they don't, cannot work for long, long. they live the company in the joint joint where else. I don't know like how long I can start. So it's, it's really important to have your mental resilience. Not only in semi final for maybe in the US, most of the industry is really hectic to work. So yeah, that's kind of.
things you might be able to consider. Okay, I will stop now. I think I am kind of running over time. Thank you Thank all you for all listening. I'm not sure, sure if that helps. helps. Anyways, if I missed your time, time, sorry for that. that. Don't, don't worry. But if you have any questions, just want to ensure like, don't, don't knock me in the Facebook or something. something. Maybe, maybe you can send me email in my link if you have any question. I will try to get back to you. We can connect with me and yeah, yeah, I think LinkedIn, LinkedIn is a better place for this place, so thank you for people giving like personal. So if you have any question, if you cannot ask today, or if you have some question in the future, just try to find me in LinkedIn, you will find me by my name, yeah, be connected. Thank you, thank you for working with me. Um, Bhaiya, some questions have already been asked in the chat box, could you please check it? Okay, let me see the chat box. Let me see. It's really dependent on if you want to get your process more than how the changes are going to come to the people. Wow, that's an excellent question. It's time to say, I'm not sure. It's like you are already working in the same time of the but yeah, that's an excellent question. If you want, okay, his question is if we want to get the lower process more than how all the changes of parameters come to the PK. PK is basically process design kit, right? right? So that's, so that's kind, kind of part, part like a like Bible of uh, technology uh, nodes. Say, for example, when we, if we have a technology node, like, like seven nanometer, nanometer, we will create a PDK. At PDK, and PDK, we have many detailed information about our, our technology node, what will be my transistor performance, and they will define some parameters like capacitance, capacitance resistance, resistance so, so many, things many things will be included, will be included in, the in the PDK. PDK. And, and basically, basically when, when we design the circuit, the circuit they basically people, people design based on the PDK. PDK. So, so yeah, it's, it's a very extensive work to define the PDK. PDK. Many, many people work on that. that, but it's but solely it's dependent on the manufacturing device and the device. Yeah, it, it, it works. works. It, it, it's there's basically like device engineer, they help on the to develop the PDK, but there are many other groups who work on simulation and integration maybe can be part of this. So it's interesting, like, yeah, but PDK is very detail oriented. It's very hard to talk about PDK in 30 minutes. So yes, if there are a lot of work going on. If you want to know more about that, I would say like maybe send me a message. I will try to share something about that. Yeah, 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 yeah
we try to measure all the all the parameters selectively and solve parameters at the weapon level. Then we dice and make modules out of that. Then we measure it again. Then we do packaging, we measure it again. So definitely there are several steps to validate the chip before it before it before, before it was sent to the end customer we do a lot of validation so i just try to give you some idea like how we do it the weapon level but the idea is saying we'll apply some voltage measure some information something else to understand like whether your performance is working or not so yeah there is we do multiple steps of verification. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's very, very industry specific. specific. I'm, I'm not sure, sure like from like academia, academia whether we'll be able to learn. And, and what I would like to mention, like, yes, from academia, maybe we will not be able to learn all these things, right? Because right. these are very really industry specific. specific. If you have an opportunity to do an internship, then we will be exposed to some extent. But what you can learn, you can learn as physics and etc. You can understand all these things, you can understand all of these physical search then, then yeah, yeah if you get an opportunity, an opportunity you will keep learning those, those things, things like how to do, do the testing, testing. Yeah. yeah but we do it in such a thing dst i'm not sure like i'm not sure what what because because, because yeah, yeah we, we use different three letter names but but i don't remember what is dst if you tell me what is dst then i answer that yeah i think that's pretty much all we have any other questions i think if you have any other questions you can ask me i will try to answer Thank you, Mohan Aya, for, for this beautiful this insight and for discussing the objectives of semiconductors with our students. Uh, before we get forward with the event, I am requesting Inti Shalwar to take a group photo. Those who are comfortable, could you please turn on camera to take the group photo? Group photo. In yes, yes, are you I'm there? Yes, I'm in here. Uh, please, uh, please take a snap. snap. Yes. Wait for a few minutes to turn on. I think everyone can open their camera. If they're comfortable, please. Uh, turn on your camera then I will snap I think my window is not ready properly because I can't see any uh, anyone to uh, I, I, I just see the sir uh, my mean slum sir then but at other, I can't see other other one to uh, <laughs> Uh, in theory, uh, yes. let's take snaps without video. Okay, okay. Then, then I'll. Snap. Okay, so. Okay, that's it. I, I take. I took. I took the snap. Okay, done. Okay, thank you, Intia Sharia. Thank you. Okay, now I would like to start the quiz session of the evening where the audience will have to answer some questions related to this webinar. The top score participants will be presented with certificates given by our faculty advisor. The Google Doc link, I think, will be provided. It has already it has already been provided in the chat back box. So let's take a five to ten minute break for the contestants to take part in the quiz.
Uh, once again, the quiz will end at 9.46. So before this, let's get on now.
Guys, only one minute, minute left, left before, before the quiz ends. ends. Okay, okay, time is up, up now, now for the quiz session. session. And uh, now, now I would like to call the faculty advisor of Marshall University, IEEE IIS, Mr. A.K.M. Bahalu Baksar, for uh, for the final speech. So I will be declaring the name of the winners and. The Everest. Please, sir, take over. Hello, Assalamualaikum, and good evening, and also good morning to our guest. I guess this is early morning in USA. So, uh, first, I would like to thank you. Uh, uh, you have a uh, really, really good uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, your time, time for us, for us uh, on this holiday. holiday. Uh, uh, actually, actually, I mean, uh, uh, I'm not a uh, student from electrical uh, engineering bank. I'm rather from, from uh, computer, computer science. science. But, but the top of the uh, uh, I guess the students are uh, also uh, from uh, 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 very informative. So, so uh, uh, I guess, I, guess uh, uh, I mean, I mean uh, uh, if, if Dr. Maiman is available, actually, actually, I have, I have uh, one thing. thing. Actually, actually, it's uh, my interest. interest. I mean, I mean uh, uh, whenever, whenever we do, we do uh, research, research uh, in the, uh, in the uh, at our at faculty, our faculty. faculty. So, so, I want to know that what's the impact or what's the importance of academic research or scientific research in the industry, in the industry. I mean, how, 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 how can how students, students use it in the future? Yeah, yeah, sure. sure. Uh, I can talk I can about, about the experience, experience and I think it's, it's, it's really, really important, important to, to, to your, your research, 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 because I think, like, like one of the, one thing, the thing, thing is, if you do a research, research then uh, research can directly help you in your in the same area, area or, or even if you go to a academic it will help, help, help even, even in the industry. industry. Some, Some research will directly help you, help but, but there is there another part, part of doing the research, research that, that I feel because I have mentioned I have mentioned research in a totally different field. But how does it help you when you do a research and you write a paper, right? When you present in a paper, that will enhance our I mean that basically it's for me it happened. It enhanced my capability to Think critically, right? right? It can have some capability. How, how can I present a thing in a way so that people will understand, right? Because sometimes we do many things, but we don't know how to present it. So to think to enhance the skill of critical thinking, communication, data analysis, right? For just to, for this peripheral skills, it's really important to focus on your research, to learn something new. And publish paper, present in a conference or wherever you can do. It's very important. I will say that that's really important. I mean, I cannot focus. I don't know how to focus more on that. But whenever you have any chance to work on a research project, if you have a chance to present in a conference or anywhere, 
please go for that. And as a faculty, you can definitely encourage your students. And that will also help you to create networking, right? If you go to a podium or symposium or a conference, you meet plenty of people. And you, you can, can learn, learn from others, others right? right? Because, because you may, may not know more things. Even when I when did I my PhD, PhD, I did I not know, I knew very, very little, right? right? So, so if you go to a conference, friends, you will see what people, people are doing. Like that will give you an enormous opportunity to learn about other people, what they are doing. So research is very important. Please, please, please focus as much as you can in your research, especially in Bangladesh. It's a very limited opportunity, but I am pretty glad to see that from the NSU, Shah Jalan University, Drake University. I have seen like they are participating in like international conferences, they are publishing in journal, they are going to different like competition, right? Robot exhibition, etc. So these are I would say, really important because if you participate in a, uh, in a competition, that will help you to get those peripheral skills at the same time. Yes, you will learn plenty of things that you cannot do from coursework. So that's what I have some friends who are in faculty in US. They say like, our students in Bangladesh, they are really talented. They know the theory much better than maybe the people who study in USA. But one thing we are lacking, the hands-on experience or the research experience. So, Please, 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 if you get any opportunity to do that kind of things, just put your 100%. Yeah, I don't care about the outcome. Even if you fail, if you, even if you don't get your conference to be published, even if you don't get the prize in the competition, definitely you will learn some essential, essential thing that will definitely help you in the future. And you can write it in your resume. You can, you can write, show whatever you have learned on LinkedIn. That will also help, yeah. yeah. So, so please, please, yeah. yeah. That's, that's really Thanks for asking this question. This is really nice question. Thank you Thank so you much so for your insight, Muhammad. So, so uh, 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 actually, actually, I am planning to do my PhD in the future. So, so uh, and uh, I will do my PhD in Germany. I saw that, and a lot of people and they are attached to the industry and they have a really good uh, portfolio with double masters phd research portfolio so uh, actually i didn't know that i mean how it uh, impacted on the industry but i asked them and i also have a skill so i guess i have a pretty good insight and uh, for the students also i always encourage the students and uh, i mean the students in Bangladesh nowadays, they are uh, and they are doing really good. They are doing really, really good. And I know about a few groups uh, at NSU also and other universities. They are doing really good in research. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, <clears throat> I guess we have uh, the winner of the quiz. So uh, I'll start announcing. I mean, uh, so we have first, second, and third. So. Uh, I mean, uh, the winner of uh, I mean, the third position has been achieved by Mr. Ashiku Rahman. And uh, second, uh, Mr. Fulfil Karim. And first position, Mashfil Rahman. So these are our winners. So uh, I'll announce it again. First position, Mr. Mashfiq Rahman, second position, Fazul Karim, and third position, Mr. Ashik Rahman. So, are these here? I mean, are these students here? All of them oh, are here? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. So, your certificates will be uh, emailed to you uh, by our members. And um, I thank you all, and I especially thank Dr. Mayaman. I mean, for making time on his holiday, and that's so early in the morning. So, uh, thank you so much, and thank you all. And uh, I'd like to uh, invite you to just uh, give, uh, I mean, last minute speech and some advice to the students, and then we we'll wrap up the event for today. So, I'll hand over uh, to Dr. Just a few words and advice to the students about research. 
<laughs> so, so I have already told what I have to tell like, you like, focus on your research, research as much as, much as possible, possible. Learn, learn more things, thing. go for a competition, etc. Whatever I told, like, I don't have anything else to say. Thanks for having the talk and if you have any questions just feel free to contact me in my email or in linkedin i will try to get back to you thank you thank you yeah and wish you all the best hope to work with you in the future yeah i'm going to find the best for you also thank you 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 I am Bamboo Hawk, sir, for taking some time off from your busy schedule for this wonderful webinar. That's for, uh, that is all for today. I hope everyone enjoyed this session and learned much about semiconductor industry. There will be a feedback form provided for you. If you have any suggestion or anything to share with us, you can submit it there. Thank, Thank you, you everyone. everyone. I saw my name quick. Okay, so, so all, all the, the IS members, members please stay, stay online. online. Have a safe safe. Safe.